Hello and a warm welcome to News Click. I'm your host, Neelu Vyas. You're going to find me on this platform every week with a brand new show called Point of View, which is going to get you views, analysis, discussions centered around the forthcoming Vidhan Sabha elections in the five states. Our focus will not be on the nonsensical scuffles typical of the TV studios, but we will dive deep to understand the issues which will define the election, the issues that will matter to the people and the country. So let's begin our first episode today with battleground Uttar Pradesh. Whoever wins UP becomes the king of Delhi, and that's one political reality, and the other reality being the fact that this North Indian state cannot be won without alluring the different communities. Hence, the most successful mantra is to polarize, and so far, every effort seems to be made to polarize on the religious lines. Hence, a Hindutva card is being played to the hilt, we see a return of mandir politics spiced up with holy dips in the Ganges, puja rituals, liberal mention of Kashi, Mathura and Ayodhya. But will this work for BJP or backfire in the year 2022? Joining me now, my esteemed uh, panelists, Professor Apurva Nans from Delhi University, political commentator, columnist. I welcome you on the program, sir. My next panelist is M.K. Venu, the found founding editor of The Wire. Welcome, Venu, on the program and Samajwadi Party spokesperson Ashutosh Varma. Welcome on the program. To begin with this discussion, I'll uh, first of all go to Professor Apurvananji. Can we really assume that this 22, 2022 elections in Uttar Pradesh is really going to be different from the previous elections which we've seen? Uh, as you rightly said, uh, uh, Mandir and, and Kashi and now Mathura is being invoked. Mm -hmm. Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh is telling his uh, his constituents that the money that was used for uh, fortification of Kabristans is now being used for Tirthastans. And the Home Minister is telling his constituents that the exodus of Hindus has been stopped by, uh, by Uttar Pradesh government under Yogi Adityanath. And uh, exodus, uh, he didn't say in so many words, but his constituents understand that so this was taking place because of criminals who happened to be Muslims. That is what he indicated. And it was repeated by the prime minister and the prime minister doesn't mince words. And he goes on telling his people that uh, earlier uh, terrorists were being, being patronized and criminals being, were being patronized. And now uh, Adityanath is playing jail, jail with criminals. Mm -hmm. So this dog whistle with not so dog whistle uh, speeches by BJP leaders, including the Home Minister, Prime Minister and Chief Minister, uh, make it very clear that BJP is trying to frame it, it in terms of Hindutva, which is essentially anti-Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are trying to create a Hindu uh, voter. Uh, which is anti-Muslim in essence. Uh, that is the attempt. And other parties are helping because Samajwadi party uh, is again trying to speak a Hindu language without being anti-Muslim, uh, which in my opinion is going to reinforce the message that the Bharatiya Janata Party is sending across. Because if you frame everything in terms of Hindu, then who yeah. this Hindu is? That Hindu is being defined by the BJP and the resources of Samajwadi Party and the Congress Party and others are not sufficient to define Hindu in some, some uh, other way. Right. So what you are doing essentially, you are not addressing Muslims, you are not addressing non-Hindus, which are also voters, uh, right. which is very sad. But this is how the election is being framed. Right. But uh, Vedu, if uh, I come to you, uh, can we are we in a position to really say that uh, we are seeing a return of Hindutva as we've never seen before, more radicalized, more aggressive? Uh, how how would you really see the phenomena up, uh, unfolding, or rather, I could say an epi phenomena, if I could say? See, there is a, there is no doubt, Nilu, that uh, that Hindutva 
uh, has assumed its most aggressive and pervasive form in the last seven, eight years. And uh, mm -hmm. as Apurvanan says, uh, dog whistles, it, it, it's almost become a default uh, option for the, for the BJP and for the largest Sanj Parivar. And this is, this is not now. This started from, if you remember when uh, Mr. Modi came to power, uh, 2014, first major speech from Redford, August 15. Uh, if you recall, he said uh, that he would want the, the countrymen, his countrymen, everybody in India to, to, to not talk about divisive issues, basically to put divisive issues on the back burner for at least, I think he said about five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and at that time, a lot of people thought maybe that, that he was very serious about, you know, putting divisive issues on the back burner. Uh, hmm. and and put and bring development uh, and economic development or other development issues to the forefront immediately after that uh, came the rss chiefs uh, big statement of ghar wapsi and after that we all know the, the entire campaign around uh, around you know uh, cow slaughter beef uh, uh, you know consumption love jihad uh, hmm. you know uh, and these things happened almost in a, you know, attacks on Christians. If you remember 2015, there was an attack on Christians. All these, all these things were aimed at, of course, Hindu consolidation, but like what I've seen, some of them happening during the, uh, during Vajpayee's time also, and even before that, but, mm. but it, it, these were never so well orchestrated by, by the mm. broader Parivar. Like you see, suddenly some attacks on Christ, uh, churches happened in 2015. At that time, Jetli, Arun Jetli said, no, no, these are not ideological. These are random. Then for mm. suddenly for three, four years, these things don't happen. Then suddenly it starts again recently. So, so the question obviously is how do these random things, uh, you know, start happening uh, with such impeccable timing, you know, <laughs> before right. UP election, suddenly Hardwar yeah. happens before UP, uh, suddenly talk about, uh, you know, Mathura happens before UP. Uh, and obviously the uh, Adityanath is, is there, uh, uh, the new Hindu icon for, uh, for the Parivar. Uh, mm. so, so these are, these are very obvious, uh, but I would also equally say, Nilu, that that he has not. This government has so bad, has been so miserable on the economic front. If you see UP's, you know, Niti Aayog's, uh, you know, uh, report on health indices, it's at the bottom. You know, UP, child health, women health, women's health, uh, you know, women's participation in, in the labor force. 91% of the women in UP Lilu are out of the labor force. They're not even looking for work. Right. And, and we have Mr. Modi, Prime Minister, talk about from Prayagraj, women, empowerment of women. So, so the rhetoric, uh, the claims and the reality, there is such a wide gulf that this gulf can only be covered through Hindutva rhetoric. So right. ultimately, you know, they, they are playing various cards. You know, they, they, they're playing the uh, you know, backward OBC card if you remember for the first time, I mean, I'm people covering BJP for 40 years have hmm. never heard a formal press conference of BJP uh, saying that that 40 40% 40 of the uh, cabinet new inductees are backwards. I mean, they have yeah. never formally, I mean, they would they, they would induct backward, but they would never formally claim in a press conference, you know. Uh, hmm. So they, they therefore uh, non yadav OBCs, uh, they are wooing them, uh, which they would earlier also. So uh, so there is the the backward politics uh, they are playing, and the Hindutva politics, which is a default uh, politics of BJP, and then yeah. there is also this development politics saying that we have made a road, we have done this, we have done that, low cost, uh, low cost. So essentially, they are throwing everything at the kitchen sink. They are not yeah. confident. Obviously, they are, they have they don't have confidence at all on the economic front. And I'll finally end by saying, Nilu, in my experience, every twelve to 13 years, inflation, price rise becomes a monster of an issue. And it comes and devours the, uh, the party, uh, the regime in power. I think right. it happened in 2011, 12, uh, you know, UPA suffered. It, it happened earlier also. And I think price rise is a big issue. Uh, and these people are internally very worried about it. Uh, the the yeah. BJP is extremely worried about it.
Well, it's not to seem to be worried, uh, but the big question is whether this phantom of uh, price rise is really going to engulf BJP because the aggressive Hindutva pitch which they are making, the return of Mandir politics. But uh, one thing which is very intriguing, uh, intriguing, Ashutosh, and I would like really like to ask you on this, that BJP's temple run is understandable. Everybody knows that it's a default politics of uh, BJP. But why are parties like Samajwadi Party, you know, playing on this unfamiliar pitch? Because it's an unfamiliar pitch uh, for you. The way... Uh, Akhilesh Yadav has been saying that, you know, I see Lord Krishna in my dreams. And especially after Harnath Singh Yadav wrote a letter to J.P. Nadda saying that, you know, uh, 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 the yogi should contest from Mathura. It seems that uh, you are, you've fallen in the same trap. You have fallen in the trap of BJP. Ashutosh? So, Nilu, I, I think there is a, a huge difference between uh, what uh, Mr. Venu has said. that They are, they are Hindu supporters. They are also anti-Muslim way of Bharti Janata Party. Hmm. Initially, Bharti Janta Party was uh, supposed to be a party of a Hindu supporter with the majority of talking about Temple, Lord Rama and Lord Krishna. But now the new Bharti Janta Party is also anti-Muslim party. And it's very clear. Because hmm. they want to suppress one society so that they kind of catch a large variety majority vote from them. Uh, uh, Samajwadi Party has been always been accused a party of uh, Yadavas and Muslim only. And we know that they are always at attacking us this only. But we know that the only uh, only way to uh, come out from this is to have a, a no, uh, overall OBC politics uh, in, in the front of Uttar Pradesh. We started uh, with various outfits, uh, small parties, which are uh, leading uh, parts in the various pockets in the Uttar Pradesh, such as Janwadi Party, Mahandal, and uh, Rajbhar, and the Krishna Patel Party, and the... Then we made a coalition so that the most of the pockets can be covered on the basis of socio-economic uh, uh, caste census. We talk about caste census, we do. At this point, at this point, the, we can only get about 7 to 8 more percent than the previous 2017 election. Mm -hmm. And if you see, uh, this mm -hmm. is my, my uh, our uh, perception, if you see the election is going in 2020, it is a byway election between Samajwadi Party and uh, Bharti Janta Party. Bharti Janta Party has <coughs> grabbed about 38.9% uh, of election, uh, electoral gain and we have 21.8%. What we assume that the new government will form something about 35 to 37% in between this. So mm -hmm. we need at least 13% more votes from all the parties, including Bahujan Samaj Party, including Indian National Congress, and also the from the Bharti Janta Party. Three or don't, four don't, months... you think, don't you think that this is an uphill task for Samajwadi Party? I mean, you moved out of your MY combination, the Muslim Yadav combination, which, which you really claim off. But yeah. how are you going to reach out to that percentage of voters you're claiming? That, that, that's, what we are, that's what we are saying. So initially, we grabbed all the party uh, leaders from various outputs from, uh, say, Bahujan Samaj Party, from Congress, from Aam uh, Admi Party. So that they, they joined the Samajwadi Party. Even the Kadir Rana, who is one of the uh, accused in there, he was also joining Samajwadi Party. Even Harind Malik, who is one of the supporter of uh, Priyanka Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi ji, is now with Samajwadi Party. Most of the sitting MLAs of Sam Bahujan Samaj Party is with the uh, Samajwadi Party. But what we gained till now is about 7 to 8% only. So now mm -hmm. our tally is uh, expected to something about 31-32%. We okay. need extra at least 7% from uh, to make the government. And from where we can get this? So two way we have. Either we snatch some, something from Bharti Janta Party, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we can also have an eye on new motors. About one crore new voters has been added in new voter list, which has been uh, added yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. which has been published yesterday. So our main focus is now adding from 31 to reach to 38 is to attract all these things. We okay. also want to remove this stamp that we are not only MY, we are something Mahila and youth, we are progressive. We also claim that we have done such a development from 2012 to 2017. So it's, we know that it's, it's not our pitch to go and say all that thing. But it's a part of society. We right. can't reject so that. Is, we, is, we are is that, that the reason, Ashutosh, if I may interrupt you, is that the reason that you're playing this uh, 
so called secular hindu cart because you are supposed to be a secular uh, you are supposed so, to play a secular hindu uh, card right now so i think it, it, it's a general it's a generalist term secular hindu i think it, there is nothing like secular hindu hindu is always a secular either you no, can, no, like, like when we say so, the bjp is an anti muslim party so that, no, that, that that's why i asked you i don't question. say i don't say bjp <laughs> was never anti muslim party now they are pretending themselves as a anti muslim party because it is benefiting to them Mm -hmm. uh, you you recall of uh, atal bihari bajpay ji you said you have the senior leaders the senior journalists did they know that atal bihari bajpay ji uh, uh, bharatiya janata party never said that they are anti muslim they never yeah. have a mob lynching you have never heard a word like mob lynching you never heard a, a government has poses nia who has uh, given a protest against this and if they are uh, from certain religion mm -hmm. so they want to suppress one society to attract the majority of politics but right. what we presume the the things have been changed from 2012 to 2022 10 years has gone and the even the uttar pradesh has also seen a development in last 10 years mm -hmm. i will not deny that bharatiya janata party has not done something but definitely we 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 feel that the is the foundation has been laid by akhilesh yadav ji who was the person in 2013 who distributed 18 lakhs laptop and now bharatiya janata party is coming and uh, giving the smartphone and tablets in 2022 hmm. so they are about 8 10 years back to us <coughs> they are coming to us so i think it, it, it's a main of uh, number game how you catch attract your voters how you grab the percentage because it's a one to one fight and we don't want to lose any aspect at that time definitely we are not so um hard liner on any religious we don't talk of religious uh, communalization we don't want to have a communal polarization but also we don't want to have a tag like they are the party of only my no because so it, these it, questions it, it, ashutosh these questions are being asked because in neta ji's tenure it was unthinkable you know for for any leader from the samajwadi party to visit mandir or uh, to talk about uh, lord krishna so this is this is really you know no, a line which the party has you, not taken earlier but you, how you, how you portray uh, if you recall of uh, neta ji's kushti he always pranam with hanuman ji put a tikka on himself and then he do a kushti each and everything but at that time the media was not like this he is polarizing that neta ji do uh, hanuman puja like this or uh, bharatiya janata party the thing the scenario has been changed it's a very dynamic right. politics so we mm. don't want to suppose the communal polarization has been done by uttar pradesh and by bharatiya janata party in next few uh, few weeks what will the option then you say oh ye to sabko pata hi tha tab bhi akhilesh ji ne kuch nahi kiya hmm so we don't want to leave any stone unturned we all to attack on every we are doing on the youth um, we have started new campaign in the industries level vote for akhilesh vote for uttar pradesh we have done all the uh, religious work also we have done all the minorities work also so in in right. in fact akhilesh is doing uh, talking about the minorities issues right. he has just raised the issue of uh, anglo indian also in the uh, right. last rally so right. definitely we are we have to face every challenge uh, i can't say that it's it's a very hard liner that we are totally not going to temples and not talking about the lord ramakrishna why should mm. it's a matter of people they want to hear he what akhilesh yadav thinks about the ram so we yeah. say that we 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 worship ram but we don't ram in the uh, we don't uh, pick ram in our politics hmm. no but is that how many people would take samajwadi party seriously if you if you are going on a temple run but 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 that's 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 a point besides and whether it gets converted to votes or not that's something to watch uh, to you know watch out for but professor purvanand uh, given the aggressive pitch of hindutva uh, i really wonder that what about the issue of anti incumbency uh, how does it really get blunted or how is it really going to unfold nobody is talking about anti incumbency against the yogi adityanath government how do we see that issue unfolding i was reading uh, the reports filed by arunab sikya and his role mm -hmm. uh, where he discusses uh, these issues and he says that bjp has an edge over others uh, despite economic deprivations that people are suffering from as venu rightly said uh uh but this hindutva thing and this uh, aggressive anti muslim page that uh, the bjp has uh, 
has played. Uh, this has put BJP in advantage over So this anti-incumbency uh, is not being talked about, or at least Hindus are not thinking about it, because a, a more pronounced anti-Muslim hate campaign has been unleashed from all corners, and media is participating in it. So yeah. the Hindu mindscape is, has been captured by this anti-Muslim uh, and anti-minority rhetoric. Studies are yet to be done because what we are speaking, we are speaking on this uh, perception and, and some observation. We need serious study to understand uh, on the voter psychology and how voters uh, behave and what do they think and over a period of time, how... <laughs> Uh, their choices develop. And yeah. what exactly is anti-incumbency? Because if you were expecting this government to deliver Hindu victory, that is what this government has delivered, Hindu victory. So did the electorate ever expect development from this government, as we understand development to be? Or is Hindu electorate question, always yeah. expected it to, uh, it to deliver that victory of Hindus over Muslims, and that mm -hmm. it has done successfully. Yeah. So when we when we talk about anti-incumbency, we also have to think about what the expectation of the electorate was, mm. and and uh, it, so what has been done. And I, I I I think what generally political parties have done, they have turned people into stratified objects bound to government schemes. Mm -hmm. So you give uh, 6,000 rupees, 12,000 rupees, you give this scheme, you give that scheme. There is no vision of good life which is being, which parties offer to people what yeah. good life is. So you promise them, we will give you 6,000 rupees. So what's the difficulty yeah. for a BJP government to give them 6,000 rupees or 12,000 rupees or some other scheme? So that's what BJP government has done. Political yeah. parties will have to think seriously. Why don't they talk about what a decent society is and how people should live and what a good life is? What is that vision? And why do they fall for? I, I understand the predicament uh, which parties like Samajwadi Party suffer from. Mm -hmm. And and my friend rightly said that he would like votes to come from all parties. And this is... Right. This is how it should happen, that you should get votes from all sections of society. And right. you should, should not be a political party tied to only one social base. Mm -hmm. That is a truly democratic uh, aspiration of any political party. But right. BJP has made it very clear that it doesn't expect and it doesn't want votes from Muslims. Mm -hmm. And it so it's trying to, uh, I would say, craft a Hindu which is so decide, decisively anti-Muslim that right. it would forget all its material wants and material well-being to, to, or sacrifice all of them for this spiritual, quote-unquote, spiritual right. pain it is mm -hmm. offering. Yeah. That is how I look at it. Right. But when uh, what, what Apurvanan just said, we see a complete uh, psychological annihilation of, uh, of a voter if you particularly talk about UP, and of, of course it's happening across the states uh, with doles, with freebies, where people have stopped thinking about issues like governance, issues that matter to them. They are happy with uh, cylinders being doled out. They are happy with a monthly emolument which is being given out. So does really BJP wants, does BJP really want an awakened voter? Or for that matter, other political parties as well? See Nilu, there are, you know, there are, uh... Two things to me are very clear. Mm -hmm. You were talking earlier about anti-incumbency. Now, uh, UP in the last 35 years has never returned the same government uh, uh, again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this Now, people are speculating this might be, if BJP has an edge this time, it could be probably the first time that that an incumbent <laughs> government, you know, uh, you know, is returned to power, right? Mm -hmm. So, now, my sense is, Within BJP, they, in their internal deliberations, there is some worry. Uh, 
worry about anti incumbency which is why my information is that until about 2 months ago the the main slogan for up was to be uh, fir ek bar yogi sarkar now hmm. it was it was to be hinged entirely on adityanath but then they figured that that there are problems with uh, uh, with adityanath his leadership uh, probably he was he was to be projected as a hindu leader but he is coming across the messaging is that he's coming across as a, as a thakur leader there are all kinds of problems with huh? and mm-hmm. and uh, therefore modi prime minister modi steps in in a big way and uh, they from a campaign uh, which was supposed to be cent- centering totally around adityanath it is now you know modi coming and uh, the, yes. the two taking pictures together mr modi putting his hands around adityanath's arm uh, doing the you know kashi thing also uh, you know inaugurating roads uh, but it's he, it's always modi is also there so modi is trying to bring his it's very clear his vote catching ability to the table and and they are worried about non yadav obcs this time one good thing in my view one one interesting thing akilesh yadav has succeeded in doing is that mm-hmm. he has struck alliance with small small other uh, non yadav obcs you know rajbars and you know patels and others right. uh, it is it is bothering them this is bothering the the bjp because if 2 to 3 3% of the voters uh, mm-hmm. leave uh, you know uh, you know there are about i don't know there the total non yadav obcs are upward of 30% in up 35% but they are they are they are in very small denomination 2 to 1% right. you know like that 4% so so if if he managed to pull uh, some of you know uh, nibble a little bit from each one of these uh, you know sections uh, right. there could be a there could be a surprise and, and and i for for i for one i was very uh, i was it was very instructive for me to see in a televised the program you know in a proper uh, debate on up elections swami prasad maurya a senior uh, you know leader minister in the ca- cabinet he very openly said that that we he, i mean he left the bsp he says we have joined bjp for real power sharing so far and he said we have not got real power sharing mm-hmm. so far we have just been fobbed off with uh, i mean he didn't say so many words but he, he implied that so far we we yeah. are just getting symbolic uh, you know uh, kind of mm-hmm. now th- that is also worrying this mm-hmm. government uh, it's a, it's a very up thakur oriented government and uh, they are worried about brahmins being uh, not being very happy we, which which newspapers are reporting widely so right. so all i'm saying is there is anti incumbency but there of course their hope is that their hindutva campaign uh, as apurvanand said their the the dog whistle campaigns kabristan uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, tirthstan uh, kashi the vishwanath now mathura uh, all these they are hoping uh, will uh, will stem this this fall or, or this uh, erosion in their in the various non yadav obc vo- uh, you know votes after all they are also mm-hmm. hindus yeah. so so i would end by saying that in 2017 and also in 2019 uh, mr modi successfully managed to uh, you know earlier there used to be the narrative that that it was uh, mandal versus kamandal right there was right. the two used to be seen as binaries but yeah. i think modi succeeded uh, to some extent in in fusing the two in, in converting mandal into kamandal so hinduization of you know uh, obcs right. now that in my view uh, that will not uh, sustain unless he delivers uh, on the ground delivers genuine power sharing on the ground yeah. I, i'm not just saying economic development now the, the they're all they've all become very aspirational the rajbars and the you know moryas and all they want they yeah. want real power as as swami prasad morya said that mm-hmm. to me is an interesting uh, sociological or uh, whatever you know uh, social yeah. engineering uh, study you know? mm. well, absolutely but uh, ashutosh if you uh, had a look at the abpc voter survey it uh, still says that bjp is going to form the next government in uttar pradesh and samajwadi party is on number 2 with 130 to 139 seats so don't you think that you would have stood a chance better if you would have aligned with parties like congress or bsp uh, which which uh, so far seem to be a strict no no for samajwadi party so uh, i think uh, mr venu has hinted something about swami prasad maurya Uh, mm-hmm. And he has uh, diverted the thing. 
so look congress and bahujan samaj party has already been joined with the samajwadi party in last four years most of the influential people from both parties have joined and the perception of uttar pradesh has been very clear that neither bahan ji nor congress is contesting fairly enough in any seats uh, okay. even then their prediction that congress can hardly uh, seat uh, hardly one of a single seat or two seats in uttar pradesh so i don't think will be benefited and the previous experience was also not so happy with all these things so definitely we hit on this uh, mandal because we always know that uh, this mandal is always heavy on this mandal uh, and that's the way the bharti janta party has also changed the past uh, their path at various times if you talk about the july they have extension they have given the extension to union cabinet and inducted about uh, 15 members of obc committee in the cabinet and it was the first time in the history of uh, india that uh, prime minister had shouted uh, this loudly in the parliament that we have made such amount of obcs in our uh, cabinet and none of the prime minister has said like this so initially they want to come on uh, attack on uh, non yadav obcs and then want to give the cabinet but suddenly they feel that now the relevant issue is also very important the roaring prices of petrol diesel is also a problem the lpg prices is also a problem but the general perceptions of the five years uh, yogi aditna sarkar is that, that this is the upper caste mostly dominantly kshatriya uh, party which has been uh, if you see about the cabinet uh, there are about uh, 12 uh, uh, about six cabinet of brahmin committee about 8 uh, uh, or 9 cabinet of chhatri committee and only 5 of obc and mm-hmm. what you say that soy prasad maurya has come from bahujan samaj party to uh, this way bjp just want to have a uh, sharing of power but what is the actual reason, uh, what your actual position right now majority of bharti janta party obc's mla say that yes this is this is not like that what we feel is sorry for that and i think in in a day or two when the code of conduct has been regulated you see most of the things will be changes because this is a clear cut concept why you are ignoring some some uh, some ways not only the muslim they are also you know they making the powerless mlas of obc committees even mm-hmm. the sc committees so i think the this part is very strong then they are they are also defaming our ourselves by making Uh, charges on corruption on akleshi they are making cbi and it rates so i think the public is very very open minded see in 2007 the uttar pradesh has first time given full majority to bahujan samaj party what happened to same public in 2012 they have rejected samaj uh, bahujan samaj party and given full power to samajwadi party and the same public the same uh, voters have given full power thumping majority to uh, bharatiya janata party so they don't excuse you if you have a mistake then a mistake so that's what we are want to say that this is a new samajwadi party who is right. neither anti upper caste anti lower caste neither uh, radical hindu nor radical <coughs> secular we want right. to have a very soft thing. and if when you talking about the why samajwadi party is talking about chanting about the vishnu and okay, see if you see about the Del- delhi election uh, why arvind kejriwal was chanting about the hanuman chalsa in the open forum mm. because uh, delhi is a population of progressive people they want they, they want the uh, party part of a extreme right or extreme left mm-hmm. so uh, similarly mamta ji has done right so what we feel that indian indians are more sentimental to the religious we can't be a very um, right way or very left way so it's a matter that thick right wing is coming in the power but they don't expect to come like this way mm-hmm. you are you but, are beating uh, somebody yeah. and but if you talk about creating a very sane and a very logical democracy people say that you have to keep politics and religion away from each other but that that's a different uh, i but i think that yeah no. no no i know that's what that's what i said it's it's a utopian concept in uh, in the indian yeah. context yeah. but professor purvanand in this whole fight between bjp and the samajwadi party uh, people are really not talking about the the noise made by congress look at priyanka gandhi the way she is uh, 
wooing the the women voters, especially you know with these marathons and uh, uh, she she does she has uh, done her bit, so to say. If if not, Rahul Gandhi has put in his entire might. But where does Congress really stand at the moment in Uttar Pradesh? I think uh, in in many ways it's uh, a beginning for Congress party. Okay. Uh, organization of Congress party had withered away in the last twenty years. In, in, in the Congress mm -hmm. demoralized. There were no uh, there were no real leadership left right. in, in in the state. Mm -hmm. All the presidents of um, the UP Congress spent their time in Delhi. So uh, workers were fe feeling left out. There, there was no relationship between leadership and the cadre of uh, Congress party. In I think this is the first time the leadership is making a serious bid to uh, rebuild its mm -hmm. organizational base. And mm -hmm. it's a welcome thing. I, I, I would say that what Priyanka Gandhi is doing would ultimately help the Samajwadi Party, because Priyanka Gandhi is galvanizing uh, a voter base or a people's base, uh, which would be definitely anti-BJP, and it would help Samajwadi Party because, as uh, my friend like rightly said, that still Congress is not seen as a serious contender for power in Uttar Pradesh. So. The people who are supporting Congress would vote for Samajwadi Party if they want to vote out uh, the Bharti Janata mm -hmm. Party because they believe in the ideology of the Congress Party. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to Congress people privately, they would agree and they would say that we don't mind because yeah. uh, the prime objective is to oust BJP because it's very dangerous. Right. And and I think what Priyanka mm -hmm. Gandhi is doing, uh, and it. It looks uh, it is very feverish. It's uh, the temperature is very high, uh, and it would be a challenge for the Congress leadership to sustain it for next two years or three years till 2024. So right. the problem with Congress has been uh, that the only adhesive force for Congress uh, workers is in power. So if you don't yeah. offer power. Why should I come to you? But yeah. this is the first time uh, they are trying to build an ideological base. And it's very good. Priyanka Gandhi is, has also taken uh, um, because she has talked about attack on Muslims. Right. Their people have visited uh, families of those who were assaulted or killed uh, during anti-CA movement. She offered security, Congress party offered security to Dr. Afil Khan. So it was very open support to Muslims. Right. And it was a huge risk because to be exactly. seen as sympathetic to Muslims is now seen as an electoral risk nobody wants to take. Absolutely. So privately they would go and sympathize with uh, Muslims, but publicly they won't like to be seen uh, in company with Muslims. Absolutely. So I think what the Congress party is doing under the leadership of Priyanka Gandhi is uh, is very healthy for Indian democracy and uh, for uh, for the state of Uttar Pradesh, but it needs to be sustained over a period of time. So next right. two years, three years, they will have to right. build their organization and then they will have to make a serious pitch uh, for power. Because right, right. in India, change, changes take place through elections. Right. And you have to be seen as a serious player in elections. Right. Yeah. But you rightly said that, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, Priyanka is trying to galvanize, uh, you know, the, all the efforts of Samajwadi Party. Before I go to Wayne, uh, yes, Ashutosh, you wanted to button at, the, yeah. at that moment? Yeah. Yes. Since, you were saying since something? I'm not an official spokesperson of Congress Party, but I do agree with what Purvanji has said. So what we feel... Uh, as a layman, as a layman, since my, most of the, my relatives are in rivalry, uh, what we feel that uh, there is a lack of communication between the Congress party leaders and the uh, normal public. See, Apuranandji is telling that Dr. Kafil has got a security, personal security for Congress. And Kafil is my good friend. Even I don't know about this. 
Dr. Kafil is also a pediatrician. I am a pediatrician. We talk regularly, but even I do. Right. So what that, that the major problem is communication. From 2014 to 2019, they have lost almost all uh, elections except uh, mm -hmm. Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. And the party who was one of the part of Indian independence and the party who is no, not ever in the independence struggle is giving right. a certificate of nationalism. So this is a part of problem with Congress. They have not changed their communication uh, strategy with the people. And that's the way they are not. I do agree that Priyanka ji is doing very good, but it's too late for Uttar Pradesh. And uh, as Apurvananji has said, that the people want to vote Samajwadi party just to pull out Bharti and the party, and then we will see right. what to do next. And this is right. my personal view about that. But MK Venu, uh, what, what do you really think that, you know, has Congress really thrown the gauntlet and they've said that, okay, we've surrendered because yesterday the way uh, they announced that, of course, COVID is the reason why they cancelled all their rallies. But uh, it is also perceived as a fact that, you know, they, they have sometimes, I mean, they look like in a surrender mode. They know that they're not going to win and uh, they've taken a moral high ground. Uh, of course, uh, making COVID as a reason, but, but they've surrendered altogether. Yeah, in the sense, uh, you know, that's the impression that, Nilu, what you just said is, 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 a, is the impression that even people have. So that's mm. not very good for a political party. If people perceive that, uh, that uh, Congress is not, uh, a party like Congress is not, you know, seriously fighting elections. Right. Uh, and to some extent, uh, uh, I feel, you know, that she, when, when Priyanka uh, uh, made that big pitch about reserving, you know, 40% of the seats uh, for women, uh, should have come about a year earlier uh, and, yeah. and should have worked yeah. through that strategy. Uh, uh, I don't know whether they have so many women candidates. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, how they're going about it. I got the impression that that announcement was made and then they were thinking it through. Uh, I don't think they had thought through the, the whole thing before announcing. That, that's the impression I have. But right. having said that, it's a, it's a good strategy uh, to bring... Mm -hmm. That many women, uh, you know, in uh, in politics, uh, uh, making them, you know, uh, uh, bringing them in the in the electoral fray. And uh, the the other point, uh, Nilu, is that uh, that Akhilesh Yadav. I remember after the last elections defeat, he he in one of my meetings with him, he told me that that the the alliance did not work because both either with both with Congress and BSP. Because because the vote transfers didn't did not happen, you know. Uh, you know, in the sense, you know, the BSP votes were not coming to him. His votes went to BSP. In the case yeah. of Congress, because they were allied with Congress, the the you know Brahmins uh, who would otherwise have voted for Congress did not go. Uh, so so in a way, it's good that these people are fighting separately. Uh, mm -hmm. So the finally, I would say the the real. If you keep aside, I, I mean, I, I go with Sanjay Kumar's uh, analysis, CSDS. He wrote a piece. Recently, yeah. uh, Sanjay Kumar, he said that BSP's say 18, 19 percent vote is like it's it's solid and it doesn't move anywhere. Now, besides that, for the remaining 92 percent votes, it, there is a uh, bipolar uh, uh, fight between yeah. BJP and Samajwadi. Now, if that is a situation, I think it's 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 a good it's a good thing to happen. You know? uh, so, so I think the the opposition votes will not get needlessly fragmented. Yeah. If right. that is the case, if what Sanjay Kumar says is the case. Yeah. Right. Uh, this entire campaign in Uttar Pradesh is really going to be interesting and all eyes would be on the narratives which are built over the next one month. What all does BJP say and how does Samajwadi Party really counter it? It's a big challenge, but all eyes would be on the campaign which has built up over the next one month. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Professor Apoorvananda, Ashutosh Varma, I'm Kivinu. It was wonderful thank talking you. to you. And we'll thank keep you. bothering you on News Click with your discussions and insights. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.